Now this is how you're supposed to see Dune. Whoa. Ah, uh, yeah. And looky here. Ah, got me the best seat in the house. What is up, everybody? Random, random man here. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time as I am here bringing you my review for the 2021 film adaptation of Dune. Set in the far future and based on the 1965 novel of the same name by Frank Herbert, the plot of this epic sci-fi film basically follows Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet, as him and his family, the noble house Atreides, are thrust into a war for the dangerous desert planet of Arrakis between its native Freeman people and its enemy invaders, the House Harkonnen. Going into this movie, it was one of my most anticipated films of the year. And it's mainly for two words and two words mainly, Denis Villeneuve. He is one of my favorite filmmakers of the last several years who has risen to a higher profile with every film that he has made, such as 2013's Prisoners, 2015's Sicario, 2016's Arrival, and 2017's Blade Runner 2049. My two specific favorite films of his of these four are Prisoners and Blade Runner 2049, with the other two being fantastic as well. And given that this was his next project, I was game with whatever he was doing, and this specific source material has quite a layered history with it as well. Now, I've personally never read the original 1965 novel by Frank Herbert, and I knew relatively little about the background and overall franchise that Dune spawned, though I am aware that it is incredibly influential. In fact, the original book is considered to be the most important sci-fi novel ever written. And in not wanting to go into Villeneuve's film adaptation of Dune completely blind, I went back and watched the 1984 film adaptation by David Lynch, and... To put it lightly, I thought it was a lackluster film. Not everything was Lynch's fault directing-wise, though. Some of the flourishes of his style that were in there and the cool setup and ideas of establishing the world of Dune did have me into it initially, and I liked a lot of the cast that was in here. It has a stacked cast, especially for the time. Kyle MacLachlan, Sean Young, Patrick Stewart, and Sting, just to name a few players. But... As the movie progressed, it felt like after the halfway point, it gave up and trying to tell its story, feeling so long, yet also cramming a lot of crap into it. Yeah, it didn't seem like the ideal film adaptation, according to fans, and as for someone who was a newcomer to Dune, eh, not the best introduction. In addition to Lynch's Dune, I also watched the 2013 documentary Hodorowsky's Dune, which detailed an earlier attempt to bring Dune to the silver screen by Alejandro Hodorowsky an eccentric Chilean director who had a very experimentalist and surrealist approach to bringing Dune to film. And he himself is that kind of director, as was also highlighted in the doc. And he certainly would have had a bold take on Dune if it was made. It was not going to be a straight or faithful adaptation of the book. And as he said, it would have been his Dune. It would have been a disruptor for the sci-fi film genre if it was made and released in the mid-1970s when it was conceived. But sadly, that never panned out for Hodorowsky. Though, despite the movie never being made, it remains an influential idea-slash-project with some details of it showing up in some of the most iconic movies that we got after that time period. So with me now having a bit of knowledge and more of an idea of what the first Dune book is about and even some of the world of Dune, it had me more interested to see Villeneuve's version than ever and luckily I was able to do so earlier today as I clearly showed with my intro in theaters at the first public screening. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have a stacked group of players here. 
Just like the previous film adaptation of Dune from 1984, there are many noteworthy performers in front of the camera here, and just looking at the ensemble alone, it's exceptional, beginning with Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides, the heir to the house Atreides and our main hero. Chalamet is an actor who I've grown to like quite a bit in the past decade, with each subsequent role of his that I've seen, and now here, given his biggest role ever to date, this, I think, brings out a lot of how much of a subdued performer Chalamet can be. And for the character that he's playing here, who has a lot of growth to him as he progresses in the movie, it is fitting to what he's able to do. Again, he is the heir to this prestigious planet and house across the galaxy, yet he is also someone who has something within him that he is trying to hone in while also trying to discover how he is able to lead. There are a lot of little moments that show that, and it also applies with how he bounces off all of the other players of this ensemble too, such as Rebecca Ferguson as his mother, Lady Jessica, who is also a part of this group called the Benny Gesserit, a prestigious group of people that train themselves mentally and physically to hone a specific set of powers. And I think that very much like how Chalamet is prominent across this movie, this film also belongs to Ferguson for what she does in bringing out the mother-son connection of Jessica and Paul. And here, given what Ferguson does too, and being integral to a lot of how the way this whole hierarchy system works within the world of Dune and where she is at, she is clearly key to the narrative. And given how gorgeous Rebecca Ferguson is too, I couldn't take my eyes off of her every time she was on screen. So there's that as well. Oscar Isaac plays Duke Leto Atreides, the father to Paul, and he is the leader of the House Atreides, and his appearance here certainly makes for the makings and all the hallmarks of what a leader should look like and act, and also being a father to Paul and wanting to instill in him how much of a person he should be, mainly in being his son, and also part of the preparation in him leading Atreides if something were to happen to him. Isaac, I always love. I think he's outstanding here. Reuniting with Villeneuve after previously working with him on Sicario is Josh Brolin as Gunry Halleck, the main weapons master and one of the mentors to Paul within the house Atreides. And here he plays a straight-laced kind of role, a very serious one to where he is trying to instill a sense of strength to Paul while also, of course, serving his house well. And Brolin in these kinds of roles he is expert in. Then looking at a different house altogether within this world of Dune is Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, the leader of the house Harkonnen, and he is basically the main villain here. He is this big, bulbous, hulking presence of a dude that is so fat to the point where he has to be floating around through the use of magnets to be able to move. Though he's not in this movie a lot, I was effectively disgusted by how his appearance was and also got a sense of what he was able to do in terms of the power that he has amassed within his own house, being against the Trades and previously having took over the desert planet of Arrakis, but given him, yeah, there's something that he has in mind. Also within the house Harkonnen, we have Dave Bautista as the nephew to the leader of that house, and like Skarsgård, he's not in this movie a lot, but he fit the mold of what this house was all about. There's also David Desmalchian as another servant of the House Harkonnen, looking a lot like Nosferatu here. Then hopping back over to the House Atreides, we have other notable players like Stephen McKinley Henderson as one of the higher-ups within that house. There's also Chang Chen as a doctor within the same community. And then Jason Momoa, I have to give a big shout out to, as Duncan Idaho. He is this high-ranking military official within the House Atreides. Atreides and his personality that he's brought both in real life and other past roles he's done, specifically Aquaman and the DCEU, fits right in here as he could have been just a straight-laced, straightforward kind of character, kind of like what I've mentioned already with Brolin's character. Yeah, here, his very fun-loving but also determined personality, I think, fits with how he just was used across this movie, and I liked the buddy-buddy relationship he had between himself and Chalamet's Paul. 
Then the last string of players I'll mention are Sharon Duncan Brewster as the psychologist on Arrakis. I liked her for the screen time that she had. Javier Bardem as the leader of the Freeman on Arrakis, who has two big moments here, one early on in the movie, and then he doesn't show up again until towards the third act. And with him, he always plays these mysterious kind of characters very, very well. Charlotte Rampling also plays a notable figure within the Benny Gesserits, who has this very intimidating look to her with this long mesh headdress over her head and this specific moment with Paul exemplifying her power over him and Lady Jessica. And then there's Zendaya as Chani, the would-be love interest to Paul who is mainly relegated across the movie to be seen within the imagination of Paul through his dreams and visions and doesn't show up prominently until the end. And it's clear that she has a bigger role than this movie initially lets on, but I always love seeing Zendaya and whatever she is in. So when it comes to this entire ensemble overall, I think that whether a player here had a big or small role, they contributed to the overall world building within this film's universe. And speaking of that, getting into the writing of this movie, it was co-written by director Denis Villeneuve, in addition to having John Spitz and Eric Roth also do the screenplay. And what is done here in the approach of adapting Dune to the big screen again, it has been made very clear that this is a first part of a planned two-part adaptation of the first Dune book. Even as the title of the movie shows up early on, it is titled on screen Dune Part 1. And having seen the David Lynch adaptation of Dune prior to this film, I basically got an idea of how this first part of Dune would play out up until it ends around the halfway point of the Lynch version of the film as again this book to film adaptation mainly covers the first half or so of the first Dune book. And to get this right out of the way, yes, this is an incomplete story, as a lot of what is set up here is potentially going to be paid off by what we would get within a second film if we were to get it, because the second part of the story was not filmed back to back with this first part. Unlike a lot of book to film adaptations, whether they are splitting books in half or adapting a trilogy, quartet or quintet of books or whatever together, that is not the case here. But with how the movie flows overall, how it is set up on paper too, I think what this movie brings out a lot of is intrigue. And I think a lot of it is how the world is built initially. As we get the idea of what is going on here in this far future world where different planets are containing houses that are fighting each other and vying for control of the entire galaxy. And with the House Atreides being ordered by the Emperor of this entire galaxy, who is not seen in this movie, by the way, to take control of the dangerous desert planet of Arrakis to dig up a natural resource known as Spice. That is the big main objective here. And this resource is so valuable that it is essentially a drug that once it is given in the presence of somebody, it can help expand themselves to beyond human ability. Then on top of that, there's also the big hero's journey with Paul Atreides and him essentially being the chosen one to not only be the heir to the throne of his house, but also in being put into this now war on Arrakis to where all these different factions are fighting for control of it. And it's a story that has been done time and time again before, right down to how many have taken directly from the Bible or any other kind of sacred text and just go forth and give off their own interpretation of being a chosen one or a messiah-like figure leading a big cause. And I think one has to keep in mind where the source material is coming from. It was written and published in 1965, and around this time too, in different mediums and forms of entertainment too, there are stories just like Lawrence of Arabia from 1962 that had big influence and popularity across their respective eras. And given Lawrence of Arabia taking place a lot within a real life desert, that is what Dune echoes a lot of as well. And with that sense of scope too, that is what Dune has in spades across it. Just the sheer vision that Denis Villeneuve has brought to this story is insurmountable. It is super duper clear that Villeneuve's passion for the source material since he was a kid is booming. 
and echoed on screen to how he has brought this world to life. His direction across the movie, I think, is very assured. Given that this is the first of two planned parts, taking his time with what he wants to flesh out within the characters and also show us a bunch of the sci-fi spectacle that this movie carries. Which I guess brings me to talking about some of the technical elements of this movie and this movie just from the way it is shot, the way it is constructed with the production design, the costume design, everything, even down to the sound. It got me so immersed with this world. That I've made it clear early in this review from my intro that seeing this movie on the biggest screen possible is the way it was meant to be seen. Yes, given that this movie is currently streaming on HBO Max along with playing in theaters per that whole WB HBO Max deal that was struck up last year, I really hope and I implore those that are at all interested in seeing Dune to see it on the biggest screen possible. I saw this thing in the premium auditorium that uh, my local theater chain has and had just built a few months ago and it has a big screen larger than a conventional theater screen with 4K laser projection and a beefy sound system, surround sound, and getting into some of the technical elements again and how I was affected by them and watching this movie this way. With the sound design, there are little things that one would not be able to pick up if you watch this thing at home. Even if you have a great sound system like I do in my living room, I have concert style speakers, nothing beats that experience of the theater as many have emphasized with movies like this. It is further added onto by how Hans Zimmer's score really had me locked onto watching this movie across it too. His signature and trademark booms, bombs, and other loud boasting and bombastic flares are in this movie, but he also has put in a sense of style that is fitting for the world that is set up within this narrative. There are bagpipes, which I think is a little surprising that far in the future, old instruments like bagpipes are still used, and even uh, choir vocals that are wailing across the film too, that keep up this uh, central theme and kind of melody all across it do. Uh, help reinforce the world building and overall atmosphere that it has from the get-go. And even from the get-go too, in the way it is flowing and paced all across it, again, it is very assured by Villeneuve as a director. Yet it also goes into how, yeah, at its length of about 2 hours and 35 minutes, it was something I did feel while watching it. Did it mean I was necessarily bored at those moments where I did feel the running time? No, but I think it more so comes up within the halfway point or so after this big turning moment within the narrative and as it keeps going in the second half, as it does go into how expansive this movie is in trying to adapt mainly the first part of the first Dune book here. And in me feeling like it was going in that way, it does feel like the movie was losing a bit of sight as to what it was doing, or at least I didn't catch all of what the movie was trying to do, imply, or say with how it was going thematically or what could potentially be paid off within the next part of the movie. But who knows, maybe if I watch this movie again, it won't be so much of an issue for me the second time around with how the movie is paced and shrunk together within its running time. But even as it stands, I don't think that it was that much of an issue for me to notice in more moments where I was already enveloped and just engrossed with what the movie was doing on a technical side and seeing the acting and the characters all do what they were doing, especially in comparison to the Lynch version. I know I'm harping on the fact that there's a lot of comparisons to that given that they're both adapting the same source material, but with this, I feel like this was something that I would have wanted to ideally experience the world of Dune the first time around within film. And maybe I would also be so inclined to go and experience Dune through its original source material and the rest of the other media that it has produced. That all being said though, this film is not going to be for everyone. Even if you are a fan of sci-fi or fantasy, it's not that the movie is cerebral necessarily or there's a lot of mental power that needs to be brought to break it all down. 
but it's more that it borders on surrealism at times and just like as I mentioned with how it is edited and paced all together it is an experience that is more about being engrossed within the world of Dune and also seeing what it could potentially bring to a second part whenever we get that and I hope we do get that. Of course though there are going to be those that are dissatisfied with this first part whether it is because of the lack of action, the lack of payoff, or just how this movie is overall in the way it flows across it. And it not being like a lot of typical big budget movies that have more action or have that moment at the end that wraps everything up in a neat bow. This is certainly not my favorite film that Denis Villeneuve has directed that I've seen of his filmography, but I do think all the ambition here and the passion that he has behind the camera is brought into this narrative. Of course, fans of the Dune universe are going to find a lot to eat up with this film and on its own as a film, Villeneuve introduces intrigue with sci-fi spectacle of epic proportions throughout and I definitely recommend it. My final verdict for Dune is Four out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Dune. Social media links in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.